from the agenda. We've been asked to show up at certain times and we will try to keep it to that. But we want to keep our meeting as open to the public as possible. So we're going to announce that if you have an item on the agenda that you'd like to discuss, or if you want to call in your comments that, uh, for call to the public, we will answer those towards the end of the meeting. And the number you need to call is 928-205-2660. And that number will show up on our screen, but again, it's 928-205-2660. Uh, feel free to call and we will answer that as well as our Meeting will be broadcast again on YouTube as well as the Sholo Facebook page. And so we just ask you to watch uh, through this evening and if you have any questions, feel free to ask those. At this time, uh, as we look for a little bit of direction and, and guidance, we've had many phone calls, many conversations, uh, been in contact with people, with our Senator Kirsten Cinema, as well as people from the governor's office people from the County Health Department, and also Association of Mayors and Councils for Apache and Navajo County. And so with this direction and consideration here, tonight we're gonna to do a proclamation. And I want uh, the public to understand that this proclamation has reason for it, so that we can direct and guide the city at this time of concern. But I want you to understand by no means is it an emergency measure that we are taking as far as changing anything but it will call for a, a matter of an emergency. But the reason for that is for us calling an emergency, which gives us the authority to close certain buildings and we have closed our, our pool. We've also closed the library, but it also makes us eligible if there are any federal funds or state funds of which we're able to, to receive as this goes on. So whereas the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency of international concern <coughs> on June 30th, 2020, the United States Department of Health and Human Services declared a public health emergency related to the COVID-19 outbreak on January 31st, 2020. The World Health Organization officially declared a pandemic due to COVID-19 on March 11th, 2020 and the governor of Arizona declared an emergency due to COVID-19 and issued Executive Order 2020-07, providing proactive measures to protect against COVID-19. And on March 13, 2020, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, declared a national emergency concerning the novel coronavirus disease, COVID-19 outbreak. And whereas Governor Doug Ducey and Superintendent Kathy Hoffman on March 15, 2020, announced the statewide closure of Arizona schools from Monday, March 16, 2020, through Friday, March 27, 2020. And whereas on March 16, 2020, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, in accordance with this guidance for large events and mass gatherings, recommended that for the next 15 days, organizers, whether groups or individuals, cancel or postpone in-person events that consist of 10 people or more throughout the United States. CDC's recommendations may be updated daily. And whereas COVID-19 possesses a serious public health threat for infectious disease spread to the city of the Sholo residents and visitors, if proper precautions recommended by public health are not followed. And whereas throughout the nation and state of Arizona, Public health and health care systems have identified precautions and interventions that might mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And whereas it is necessary and appropriate to take action to ensure the spread of COVID-19 is controlled and that the residents of the city of Sholo remain safe and healthy. And whereas the mayor of the city of Sholo is authorized by the Sholo City Code 2-2-4 at Section F, powers and the duties of the mayor, and by ARS 2630-311 to declare an emergency. And whereas during the emergency, the mayor shall govern by proclamation and have the authority to preserve the peace and order of the city of Sholo, including but not limited to imposing curfews, ordering the closing of any business, closing to public access, any public building, street, or other public place, and call upon regular or auxiliary law enforcement agencies 
in organizations within or without the city for assistance. Now, therefore, I, Darrell Seymour, mayor of the city of Sholo, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the state and the Sholo City Code, do hereby proclaim the COVID-19 outbreak presents conditions in the city of Sholo which may be beyond the control of the services, personnel, equipment, and facilities of the city of Sholo, and thus justifies a declaration of emergency according pursuant to ARS Section 26-311 in Sholo City Court Section 2-2-4F, I do hereby determine and deem that an emergency exists due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which presents conditions which could be beyond the control of the services, personnel, equipment, and facilities of the City of Sholo. And two, declare that mayor of the City of Sholo shall, during such emergency, govern by proclamation, and shall have the authority to impose all necessary regulations to preserve the peace and order of the city of Sholo. And three, declare that during this emergency, the city of Sholo shall have full power to provide mutual aid to any affected area in accordance with local ordinances, resolutions, emergency plans, or agreements, therefore. And four, request assistance of the Nav County of Navajo, the state of Arizona, and the federal government of the United States of America. And five, Order and direct that public access be closed at the following public facilities in Sholo in the interest of preserving the public health and preventing the spread of disease. The Aquatic Center, Public Library, City Campus Gym, Employee Gym, and the Senior Center. And six, order and direct that all city scheduled activities creating a gathering of people of the city shall be canceled and that rental of city facilities to private parties for events shall be canceled and fees refunded. And seven, order and direct that all out-of-state requests for city business travel shall be denied unless summoned by court order or discretionary case-by-case -case for moving intergovernmental projects of the city forward or similar unavoidable circumstance. And eight, all businesses are encouraged to follow the protocols of public health officials and to limit large gatherings on their premises and to mitigate the potential of transmission including using delivery services, drive through service, and social distancing. We encourage everyone to be measured in the purchasing of good. Nine, order direct and authorize the city mayor to implement any procedures and take any action he deems necessary to carry out the intent of this proclamation. And 10, public meetings shall be procedurally modified as follows until the emergency declared here in abate and is withdrawn or a subsequent proclamation is issued with amendment. No general public shall attend the meeting. B, those deemed necessary to attend for agenda item will be allowed to attend in limited numbers. C, the meeting shall be broadcast on Sparklight Channel 56 or 1056 on sholotv.com, live streamed on the internet via the Sholo YouTube channel or other means. And D, those wishing to comment on an agenda item a call to the public will be allowed to call in to address the mayor and council. Anyone who knowingly fails or refuses to obey the orders issued in this proclamation shall be guilty of a class one misdemeanor as authorized by ARS statutes number 26-317. This proclamation shall take effect of March 17, 2020 and remain in full force in effect until amended or terminated by further order of the mayor of the city Council, date of the 17th day of March, 2020. At this time, I just want to share with you that it has always been the first responsibility of this council is the public safety and their health. And this is by no means anything that I personally wanted to do or, or act upon. However, we feel it's the best interest at this time for our community and for the citizens of, of our, our city. We had today our first case, uh, a positive case of the virus uh, COVID-19 that was in the, the Navajo County. And so we do have it in our area. We do have it in the state of Arizona. There are changes that have happened to, to some of the people, some of the businesses in areas where there are multiple cases. They have actually Ask some of the restaurants and some of those business to limit uh, how they serve food and, and how they do business. 
Right now, we are not limiting any of the business operations in town other than we're just asking people to be aware, uh, possibly the restaurants maybe to have a plan if we have to move to that. But understand that the next 15 days are crucial. This is crucial that we can get ahead of the curve. You're gonna hear more and more reports of cases being discovered because we're just now starting to test more and more people. Tests are becoming more available. The Mayo Clinic as well as Banner Health are, determined, are able to put together some tests that they'll be doing drive up uh, tests where you can just drive through and, and be tested for people who, who have the, the symptoms. So there are measures that are speeding the testing process and more testing is gonna take place. And as that goes through, it's only possible that the numbers of cases will rise. But if we are wise and smart and follow good hygiene practices, we'll be able to control this and keep this contained. So at the end here, I just want to share something that as we change and as we look at doing a little bit more of uh, social distancing, maybe remember these words. Every hand that we don't shake must become a phone call that we place. Every embrace that we avoid must become a verbal expression of warmth and concern. Every inch and every foot that we physically place between ourselves and another must become a thought as how we might be of help to another should the need arise. Let's stay safe and let's draw one another closer in a way that we've never done before. And this is from Rabbi Jose and F. Scott. So I just want to thank the citizens, thank the employees of the city, and thank you for the great job that you're doing and, and patience that you're exercising and parents and children and everybody's concerned here so we will go through this together and anything that we can do to help feel free to call or reach out to us and if anybody has any special needs feel free to reach out to us because we can always help those who need to stay at home get groceries or do things for it let's just be more neighborly than we ever have and it's my sincere hope that we as a city will be able to get through this without any incidences that that are something that we can't overturn. So thank you so much for your cooperation. Our next item tonight is a special event where we have uh, the swearing in of new council members. We'll turn the time to city clerk here, Ms. Reedhead. Council members, to come to the front. You can have the microphone. No, you can have it. No, you can. It's all right. Right, here, all right, if you'll please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Brant Clark. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of the state of Arizona. Of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of the position of. Discharge the, the duties. The duties of the position of. City. City council, council member. member. Okay. According to the best of my ability. According, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Right. You gentlemen would like to take your seats here. Normally we'd stand up and congratulate you and give you a big pat on the back, but uh, I'm just going to turn the time here to <laughs> Council Member Leach if you'd like to take a, a moment, followed by Council Member Clark. Just share any thoughts you may have. Um, thank you guys for, for, uh, having faith in me to put me back on the city council. I certainly appreciate it. Um, I'm just looking <laughs> forward to this next coming year. Some of you may know I am running for mayor. Um, and that's about it. I just want to thank you guys for, for having the faith in me to continue. Thank you. <clears throat> council member Clark. Uh, thank you, mayor. Uh, I just want to thank um, all the members of the council as well as the mayor. Um, the city staff who've already reached out and congratulated me and for the confidence and the faith you guys have put in me. Um, I've served on the commission uh, for, I think it's been six years now, and um, 
I have uh, been in awe at what you have been able to perform in those last six years, and, and even longer than that. Many of you have served longer than that, and I, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this body. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to be rubbing shoulders with some very great people, and I, I look forward to that opportunity. I also wouldn't be here without my wife. Um, I want to thank her uh -oh. for all of the support that she has uh, given me throughout my life, throughout my career. I, uh, I truly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her, and, um, and for my family. Um, I come from a very large family here in uh, in the Shoal area. In fact, I grew up in a house just two doors down from here. And um, my my mom um, and my dad, they uh, they mean a lot to me. And I, I wouldn't be here without them and without my support of my family, my my siblings. And and I, I appreciate my four boys who are probably not watching this at home. <laughs> They're probably on video games or something like that. But um, it, it take, truly takes a village to to have somebody here on the council. And I, I know each one of you have a loving supporting team behind you. And they're the ones who make it possible. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, to serve and to grow. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say we're sorry to both of you guys tonight that we're not able to have all of your family here and people who have supported you through your life. And we just know that they're out there. And we just uh, thank you for your support and for honoring uh, some of the decisions that we've made here tonight as a city. And so we look forward and we welcome you on the council. Councilmember Leach and Councilmember Clark, we look forward to serving with you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Any other council members at this time? I'll just open it up a little here. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Welcome. Item B, uh, presentation of fire adaptive community recognition has been uh, postponed for another time. And our next item is item C, presentation of the upcoming update regarding the census of 2020. Mr. Justin Chagaskis. So can they leave? Mm -hmm. yeah. Justin will be here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Sign in, mystery guest. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chagaskis. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, welcome to the new members um, for your first official presentation. Um, I'm going to check real quick here. That's what I thought. Just need to bring up my presentation. We're going to start with a uh, video. Um, some of you are familiar with this video. You've probably already seen it. Uh, these are videos that uh, were produced here by city staff. Uh, Mel and his department spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, so we'll watch that video, and then I've got a few things with this. So thank you. Hello. I'm Darrell Seymour, Mayor of the City of Sholo. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to participate in the 2020 Census. The 2020 Census will be historic as it will offer the opportunity to complete the Census online instead of the standard paper-based form that most people are used to. Accurate population counts are important to our community for a number of reasons. These reasons include determining congressional representation and allocating federal and state funding for things such as roads, parks, police, and schools. Businesses also use census data when looking for new locations. Kiosks will be set up at both City Hall and Sholo Public Library to help provide locations for people to submit the online form. You can participate in the census as a Sholo resident, even if you are a part-time resident. All residents, even children, qualify to be counted in the census. As your mayor, I'm regularly asked how individuals can help the community. This is an easy way you can benefit your city for the next 10 years. I would invite everybody to participate in the 2020 Census. Remember, you count. Well, that's just one of uh, several videos that we've produced. Uh, the mayor's in that one. Uh, we have uh, the quarters are in another one, uh, talking to retirees, uh, second home uh, owners. Uh, we also have a member of city staff, uh, Jose Campos, who's bilingual, uh, and he did one in Spanish uh, so that we can reach out to the uh, Hispanic members of our community, explaining to them the importance uh, of the census uh, to the community and, and why we're asking people to do to participate in it. Now, there's really three reasons why the census is important. Uh, first of all, um, it's required uh, every 10 years by the Constitution. 
A lot of people don't realize that. It's actually constitutionally mandated. Uh, secondly, it's utilized for a representation in Congress. Uh, every 10 years, they reapportion those, that representation based on where the population is. There are some people who project that Arizona could gain uh, at least two seats, possibly more, based on uh, population growth within the state. So that's important for us as well. Uh, we like to have representation making laws of people who uh, understand us as Arizonans uh, rather than uh, some other part of the country. Uh, and then finally, it uh, deals with funding of various programs. Uh, one of the easiest ones to point to is HERF, which is our Highway User Revenue uh, Fund or Revenue Fees. Uh, those are based off of uh, gas tax. Every time you put a gallon of gas in your car, you pay a tax. A portion of that is uh, the HERF tax. Uh, those funds are used to pay for things such as new roads or maintenance on our existing roads. Uh, we all know in the summer we get hit with a lot of people uh, who aren't necessarily from this area. Their HERF tax is counted where they apply or where they fill out the census, uh, but yet they use our roads. So uh, we want a uh, more accurate count so that we can get more accurate representation of those HERF funds to help pay for the maintenance of the roads. Um, this year, as the mayor introduced on the video, uh, is historic because you can apply to the census online. Um, notifications have already been sent out to people. Uh, I haven't received mine personally yet. I've heard from some other individuals who have not received theirs personally yet. You do not have to wait until you actually get the official notification from the census. You can actually go online at any time. Uh, we've got the website there on the presentation. I just did a quick search uh, 2020 census response form and was able to get right to it. Um, but uh, anybody can go online. Uh, you can also reply via phone or if you're old school, uh, you can do the uh, old uh, style uh, with just the paper. Uh, but they're asking people to try to respond electronically because that gets the information in a lot quicker. Uh, and then finally, you got questions, give me a call. Uh, there's my direct line. I've got voicemail. I will call you back. Um, just uh, there at City Hall, 928-532-4041. So with that, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm available for questions. Council Member Leach. So I, we got ours in the um, online um, how to sign up, but then it said we needed a four-digit code or something that we're going to get in the mail. Is that still coming or do we have to call to get that if we haven't received it yet? I mean, they mailed them out, I think a week ago or so. Right, so the official census notifications, um, the city sent out some notifications to all postal customers within the 85901 zip code. Uh, you'll recognize that because it's got a little thing on the side with a contest saying, hey, if you wanna guess what the uh, census population will be, you might win a free dinner to uh, one of our restaurants here in town. Uh, that's not the official census notification form. The official notification form should come from the U.S. Census and should have a code that is I identifiable to you specifically, but it's not required. Uh, you can actually go online and just enter your address uh, that you wish to be considered or as a resident of, and then it'll just ask you the standard census uh, questions after that. Who lives at the home? Um, what race? I think they even ask how old you are, uh, but that's about it. So there won't be any special codes coming in the mail? Or it should anything? still be coming. If you haven't received it yet, you should receive it shortly. Okay. But again, it's not a requirement. If you don't receive that for whatever reason, you can still go online and fill out the census form. Any other questions, comments? They shared with us a little bit today that that may be disrupted a little with timing, but they're going to work with that, especially as it goes to where we start canvassing door to door. So depending on what other things that we're dealing with uh, could extend the census a little bit, but let's stand up, let's be counted. Uh, it's one of the things that contributes a lot of dollars over that 10 year period, because this only happens once a decade. And so, if we don't get you counted this time, it will be 10 years I before we can count you. Yeah, um, some estimates will say that uh, for each individual that's counted, 
uh, approximately $3,000 worth of funding is returned to the area. That's not all city funding. Um, that's different uh, things such as your schools, uh, your uh, health care for elderly uh, individuals, that type of thing. But when you look at each person over the course of 10 years, that number can add up very quickly. And we get people who ask us a lot, what, I want to do something for the community. What can I do that will help the community? This is a very easy, very simple way uh, to impact the community for a very long time, the next 10 years. So. Thank you. We appreciate what you guys have done to get the word out and signage and stuff. And you'll continue just to one more, out. just a real quick, when the mayor just made the comment about door to door, are they still going to do that with this virus going on? Or do you know, or have you heard anything about stopping that now? Uh, we have not heard anything specific to that. Uh, plans prior to uh, this issue that we're dealing with, with the coronavirus, uh, if you did not respond uh, to several attempts, ultimately somebody could be knocking on your door asking uh, if you need some help filling out the census forms. That may be changing. Uh, seems to change daily right now. So okay. we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, the best thing would be for people to go ahead and respond uh, independently of that. Uh, that way they can make sure that they've been counted and not have to worry about somebody coming and knocking on their door later. And right now the canvassing of door to door wouldn't start taking place on the current schedule till about May. And so mm. we have some time. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Next Thank item you. is the consent calendar. Uh, any items on the consent calendar need to be older discussed? Okay, I'll go through those. We have a consideration of the acceptance of Fairway Park Phase 4 water line replacement project number W-1319. Consideration of North 16th Avenue water line extension project W-2019. Consideration of acceptance of grant funds for the American Library Association in Transfers. And then we have the meeting, uh, minutes of the meeting of the March 3rd, the March 6th, and March 10th meeting. So, need a motion on the consent calendar. I have a motion consent. by Councilwoman Kakavas, seconded by Vice Mayor. Any other discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? See that passed seven to zero. Got to get used to that seven number again here. Yeah. <laughs> Next item we have is new business, uh, consideration of award of construction contract for West Cooley and 8th Avenue water line replacement. City of Shola Project W0120, Mr. Himasaw. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. <clears throat> City's fiscal year uh, 2019 to 2020 capital improvements plan budget includes a total of $437,000 for a water line improvement project labeled West Cooley Central to 8th Ave. Uh, the scope of the work. Um, this project consists of replacing approximately 4,200 linear feet of aging and deteriorating six inch AC water main with, or with PV, eight inch PVC water main, selling new services to fire hydrants and replacing any existing pavement or concrete uh, required for the improvements. Uh, the work will take place in West Cooley from Central Avenue to 8th Avenue and in 8th Avenue from West Cooley to West McNeil. Uh, this project was designed by city engineering staff with a construction estimate of $539,000. Uh, the project was publicly bid in accordance with statutory requirements with the following results. Apache Underground and excavating at $538,304 and Rolling Specialty Contracting at $542,890. Um, staff has identified available funding uh, in the capital carryover account to fully fund uh, the proposed improvements. Staff recommends awarding the construction contract for the West Cooley and 8th Ave Waterline Replacement City of Shola Project Number W0120 to Apache Underground Excavating in the amount not to exceed that $538,304 and approve the associated budget transfers. Uh, the bid tabulation is attached and I'm available for any questions. Any questions, comments? Council Member uh, Leach. Just a quick comment, I guess, when you see these and you get five or six, seven bids, is there, what's the deal with this one? Is it something different than normal or why is there only two? That's, I don't know for sure. At the pre-bid meeting, when we invited the contractors to come, you know, to evaluate the project, to think about putting it in a bid, we have 12 contractors show up and yet we received only two bids. Uh -huh. uh, the half an hour later, we had another pre-bid meeting for a separate project and we had 10 contractors showed up and we got zero bids. 
So I don't know if people are busy or if they're not really looking for work yet, or I don't know what's going on, but the, the numbers are in line with our estimate. We feel right. confident with the bids. Um, but yet to see that light of bids and we had such a turnout was, was interesting. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, did, you know, I drove down through Cooley, down how this thing is going to run and everything else. And, and the people do have a, a, a good argument about how bad that road is. But please, please just bear with us for a while. We will have that road back to a lot better than, uh, let's put it this way, we'll have it better than a dot road down the middle of Sholo. <laughs> <laughs> done. Uh, but you know, just bear with us. It's 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 a time-consuming thing. Uh, when we're all done, we'll have all our underground stuff uh, taking place and and all cleaned up and new parts put in and everything else. So hopefully, it'll last their lifetime and our lifetime. So thank you very much for having patience with us. You bet, Vice Mayor, Council Member Kelly. I was going to bounce back to the previous question and ask the question. Is it appropriate for us to explore some of these non-bidders uh, to ask, you know, why? I mean, is that inappropriate, or can we try to figure out why we're not getting bids from these people? Um, a couple of the contractors do contract or contact back the city. They spoke to our my admin and just said, oh, one of them was, we're, we're just too busy. Uh, another one said, my estimate was just going to be higher than the engineer's estimate. We didn't feel like we wanted to put a bid. So it's we've heard just from a few, um, uh -huh. but that was the two comments that I remember hearing okay. uh, on this bid. These two, to be only two and be so close together, we need to send condolences to Rawlings or something because they about they got to be crying, you know. <laughs> it was it was a close bid for that bit of a job. It was a very wow. On mm -hmm. the <laughs> vice mayor. Uh, if nothing else, I'll go ahead and make a motion. Yeah. I move to a work construction contract for the West Cooley and 8th Avenue Waterline Replacement City of Shovel Project number W0120 to Apache Underground excavating an amount not to exceed $538,304 and approve the associated budget transfers. you have a motion? Is there a second? Second, sir. Second by Council Member Leach. Any other discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? See that pass seven to zero. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, Shane. Next item we have is a consideration of approval of preliminary development plan and final plot uh, for a replat of Creekside at Eagle Mountain Estates development. Mr. Trugaskis. Thank you, Mayor and members of Council. At its March 10th, 2020 meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted five to zero. Commissioners Robertson and Barons were absent to approve the preliminary development plan. Submitted by Creekside Partners LLC for a replat of Creekside at Eagle Mountain based on staff recommendations. The applicant has indicated this 53 lot subdivision will be for single family homes. Manufactured homes will be prohibited. The gross area of the proposed subdivision is approximately 19.24 acres with a minimum lot size of 0.16 acres, average lot size of 0.25 acres, and a maximum lot size of 0.69 acres. The subdivision is zoned. Planned Unit Development, or PUD, and as part of the Eagle Mountain Estates development. The applicant has also submitted a final plat to be considered concurrently by the council at tonight's meeting. Previously submitted final plat called Creekside Eagle Mountain Estates was approved by council on June 19th, 2007, and was recorded with Navajo County. Construction on the project was started by a previous developer, but was not completed. Mm. Previously approved Creekside Eagle Mountain Estates development plan called for a 116 lot townhome subdivision. The replat for Creekside Eagle Mountain will replace the 116 townhome lots with 53 single family home lots. The replat reduces the number of units per acre from 6 to 2.75. The submitted project narrative states that 90% of utilities have been installed. 25% of the roads were completed and the remaining improvements will be completed in three phases. Subdivision will be gated with private roads and 1,300 to 1,800 square foot homes. Conceptual elevations have been attached for your review. Uh, also included in the CCNRs was a restriction on short-term rentals. Uh, all rentals would be a minimum of 30 days or longer. The applicant has indicated that they will use a form of assurance similar to what was used for the Snow Creek development. 
This assurance has been reviewed by the city attorney and has been found to be satisfactory. Based on previous approvals for this development, no sidewalks are proposed. However, forest access will be provided. Uh, also, the applicant has indicated that internal trail system will be utilized. Staff has reviewed the submitted preliminary development plan and final plat and found that they meet all requirements of city code. Subject property meets all underlying zoning requirements of the PUD zoning. Conditions of approval as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Number one, all developments shall comply with all applicable federal, state, and local requirements. Number two, public sewer and water lines within the development shall have dedicated public easements. Number three, drainage ways, including basins and culverts, shall be designated as private drainage easements. And number four, all development of Creekside of the Eagle Mountain shall be in substantial conformance to the submitted preliminary development plan, deed restrictions, and the Eagle Mountain Master Plan. With this, uh, myself as well as the developer are available for questions. Thank you. That's Member Leach. So you made the comment about the 30 day, does that not have the 30 day minimum rental? That doesn't have to be on here anywhere? It's just a verbal? It's, it's part of the CCNR, so it is a recorded document uh, that runs with the property. And then one really, just so I can get my Kazendas going, is it the one with the building out front, the block building, or is it before that? Which one is it? Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the aerial here. The uh, area in question is outlined in red. Uh, the building that I believe Councilman Leach is referring to is down on the very southern tip of that. Okay. Uh, there is a driveway in place now that goes in and then up to the north to that project. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Okay, Justin, I got a question. Um, was the sidewalks in the original one or not in the original one? There were no sidewalks proposed in the original approval. Uh, again, they were planning on using an internal trail system. They did not have any forest access planned as part of the original approval. But now they have forest access planned and a trail system put in? And they are, yes. So um, skip through. We've got a lot of slides for this one. Um, I'm going to skip basically all the way to the end. Um, so this was the preliminary development plan for Creekside of the Eagle Mountain. Uh, this was all three units, uh, one of which has already been developed, uh, single family lots, that's on the east side of 43rd. The area that we're talking about here is on the uh, west side of 43rd. And uh, I'm gonna get to right here. You can see these are the townhome lots that were proposed in that area. And you can see cutting through the center, uh, through what was kind of a drainage way, that was their trail system. Uh, under the current proposal, uh, they are revamping this, and I'm now gonna have to go back a number of slides to show you where I'm discussing. Uh, so you can see they're now proposing uh, larger lots with a tract in the middle. Uh, this will be comprised of uh, some drainage, there will also be some trails that run through this track uh, as part of this. So similar to what they had with the uh, townhomes, only rather than a, a large tract that was uh, open to everybody, they're removing a portion of that tract, making it into uh, privately owned lots. And then the remaining portion of the track will still have the trails that run through there. Okay, so the, the track that's gonna be running through there, Anybody's going to be able to have access through for that to walk through, or is it just going to be the owners in that subdivision? Is, this is a private gated subdivision, so it'll be just for the uh, homeowners within the subdivision. Thank you. Councilwoman Kukavis. Justin, in the subdivision, originally there was a bunch of streets that were already located in there. Um, have those streets been looked at as far as coming up to standard and being repaired? Um, some of them were in pretty bad shape from lack of use and maintenance. Right, so uh, kind of looking back at the aerial, uh, the kind of the main road that comes through here has been paved. Uh, it's not complete. There's still some work that needs to be done on that paving. All other portions of the roads that you see here on the aerial 
and also on the plat. Um, those roads have not been completed. In some cases, they've only been roughed in. So those would need to be completed as the phases develop. I think where this is a PUD, they will be private roads though, correct? The city wouldn't have the responsibility to maintain them? They are proposed to be private roads as they were under the previous development. Uh, so uh, in order for them to be maintained by the city, they would have to be brought up to city standards. That note is on the plat as required by code. Thank you. Council Member Leach. Brings up one more comment about where you said it goes into 43rd. I'm sure it's in one of them drawings, but um, I didn't look at it. So from the highway, 260 is going to be able to enter. Are you going to be able to exit on 43rd or enter off 43rd? I'm sure you have it on here, but I just, as you said, gated now. So Right. Um, so kind of apologize. Our maps are, are on different sheets because of this. Um, there is the main entrance is off of the highway. That's mm -hmm. what you see by that commercial building as you're driving out towards Linden. Uh, there is also uh, a, an access that is off of 43rd. Mm -hmm. So property owners will be able to access either way. Uh, there will be gates at both locations. Uh, so either location they could come in or out of uh, to access this development. Councilwoman Kakavis. So yeah. south of that, um, it's not in that same area, but there is access off of 260 onto going east onto 43rd, right? Is that public access? Correct. The subdivision directly to the south uh, was actually completed by uh, the developer that's representing this project. Uh, that is Scott Ranch Road that runs across there and that Smith, Smith, Smith sorry Smith Ranch Road Scott Ranch Road <laughs> is on the other end of town um, that is a public street uh, and is accessible by members of the public from 43rd to 260. <clears throat> that's a member Kelly you know uh, with the gated community if the streets are brought to city standards does the city take them over for maintenance uh, it the possibility is there. There's a lot of uh, background things that would have to take place in order for that to happen. Uh, the first is that it would have to be brought up to city standards, which would include right of way width. Uh, then it would also it would have to be dedicated from the HOA who owns the roads over to the city. So it, it's not a simple snap your fingers and you're done process. There is an option available. In this case, very unlikely that that would happen. But they could still maintain the full closure to the public? Not if they're dedicated to the city. Once they're dedicated to the city, they would be public streets and open to everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I just want to make a comment to the developer that's here tonight and just tell him thank you for this project is set there for many years, and I appreciate your fortitude to go in and to look at what you can do to make it a viable project again. And I think uh, you'll be very successful with the plan that you put together here. And we just wish you all the best here, as it's been, I think, what, 14 years, and and you got some foundations started. You didn't yourself, but uh, you know, I appreciate what you're willing to do and what you've done in the other areas that you have taken over. I think it's been a, a great asset to our community. Appreciate it. Look for a motion. I move to approve the preliminary development plan and final plat for a replat of Creekside, a 53 lot subdivision located in Eagle Mountain Estates Development, subject to the conditions of approval recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission and authorize the mayor to sign the associated documents. I have a motion, second by Council Member Kelly. No other discussion I have, I just want to ask you so the building will be that's out there currently will be part of this PUD. Good evening. I'm Corey Frampton. I represent the developer. Um, yes, it is part of the plan, but it can be sold separate. It's not being used as a community facility or anything like that. Okay. Is there anything that we need to do platting wise here to, you know, keep that where, or are we okay with that? The, the plats themselves reference 
Do they? The separation of those parcels. Okay, I should have probably checked on that first, but thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other? Did we have a motion and a second? I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? That passed seven to zero. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item we have is item 8C. Uh, lease agreement with Northeastern Arizona Community Resource Network. Uh, city manager, city attorney, which one would like to go first, city attorney? I'll go ahead and take it. So the city owns property located at 760 East McNeil, which is part of the city campus, kind of the old school campus over there. Navajo County and Head Start used to lease portions of this property, but is now vacant and renovation is needed to bring the building up to current building code standard. The city was approached by the Northeastern Arizona Community Resource Network, Inc., which is a nonprofit corporation that does workforce development and other services in Navajo, Apache, and Gila counties. They currently lease office space from the city at City Hall. They are connected to the Northeastern Arizona Local Workforce Development Board, which oversees the Arizona at Work Job Centers. They are interested in consolidating all their operations into one location. <clears throat> they intend to operate a job center in the building and are also interested in adding services such as an entrepreneur mentorship program and support for parents and families. I'll just call it uh, Northeast Arizona because <laughs> I'm not sure how to say that uh, uh, acronym there, but uh, has been actively seeking grants to renovate the building. They are aware of environmental issues with the building, such as lead paint and asbestos, and they have worked with the city, and we have obtained a grant from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. <clears throat> the grant was awarded in the amount of $99,000 to remediate the lead paint and asbestos at all the buildings on the campus, and this work is scheduled to begin in August of this year. Um, Northeast Arizona has also obtained commitments from the other partners, including Care First Health Plan and NACOC for renovations. They are in the process of securing an architect to finalize the plan. City staff feels this lease would be beneficial to renovate a historic building and to have a secure tenant. The city would need to budget a significant amount of funds to either renovate the building or have it torn down if we did not have this partner to lease the building. The lease would allow the group to pay a minimal amount of rent for two years while they are securing funding, developing plans, and commencing the renovation. The lease has a clause that after two years, the rent would increase to $2,000 per month, and then the rent would be $6,000 per month after a certificate of occupancy is issued. If Northeast Arizona cannot get the certificate of occupancy after three years, then the lease would terminate. The city has budgeted $115,000 for replacing the roof on the proposed building to be leased. The lease allows Northeast Arizona to use $40,000 of these funds for architectural services, allows using any remaining funds for other renovations if they commit to replacing the roof at their expense upon completion of the project. The lease is for 20 years and allows for a credit of $6,000 per month for the renovation costs in Northeast Arizona. Northeast Arizona is responsible for a portion of the common area maintenance as shown on the attached map. As the city council is aware, the city will also be budgeting to do other improvements at the city campus, including removing the teen center building and the police storage building and improving the park. Staff recommends approving the lease with Northeast Arizona. I will just direct you to the map. If it, yeah, it's up on the screen there. So it's kind of the, the building is in the, the kind of the pink area. And then you can see a crosshatch that shows kind of the common area that they would be responsible for. And we have uh, Stephanie Ray here with Northeast Arizona who can answer any questions that you may have as far as their funding and their plans there at the building. And we're happy to answer any questions. Any comments, questions? Council Member Kelly? Yeah, a couple of things. One on these taxes, once we lease it out, the taxes become due as opposed to the city owned property being exempt. Is that uh, correct? There's probably no taxes due on it because it's still owned by the city and it's a nonprofit that's going in there. So there's probably no property tax. But any due would be paid by them, right. it says. So I just was surprised at, about that. And on an analysis of this, with it being able to be terminated with a simple 90 day notice, as I'm reading it, um, how how does the city come out? I'm wondering if financial analysis has been done 
say, at five years and 10 years intervals? Uh, or do we know where we stand on this? It seems like anybody can bail. We can't bail on them after they've spent all the money fixing it. That wouldn't be right. And if after they started paying us right. real, they bailed on us, that don't seem like that would be very good. Well, the, the lease is designed to, I guess, ramp up when they, they get to the point where they're actually <laughs> occupying the building. Right. So it's to give them a couple of years to try to get their plans in order to get the permits to start the renovation um you know if they get to the point after three years like we indicated and they and they just can't get the project done at that point yes we can give them a notice and then we may have to move on i would doubt that they would put a million plus dollars into the building and want to bail on their part that doesn't make sense doesn't make sense so it was designed to kind of give them credit for their renovations at a, on a 20-year lease. So after about 20 years, it'll have basically paid at the, the lesser amount we're charging. We'll have given them credit for the renovations that they made. If you factor that out over 20 years, it's about a million and a half dollars. And that's approximately what they have to put into the building to make it workable and feasible. So we get still get 6000 a month over those 20 years. That's a woman Kakavis. So this is a complicated partnership, um, but it's very important to our area. So I, I would like to have Ms. Ray come up and explain the project and, and really what um, Arizona at Work um, and the different parties, what the relationship is and what the purpose of the um, programming for Thank our you. area. Stephanie, we'll turn the time to you for the next uh, 45 minutes, at least. Uh, <laughs> I would like to explain your program here, but we appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so the Arizona Work, the Northeastern Arizona Local Workforce Development Board is tasked with overseeing um, a multitude of programs that are funded through the Department of Labor. So at the end of the day, the things that we are overseeing are intended to help people get into self-sufficiency. And one of the issues that we run into a lot is that the monies that we spend don't necessarily take care of all of the needs that people have. And so what we're hoping to establish here is a, an Arizona Work Job Center, as mentioned in the uh, staff summary, as well as a parent support. So we want to see we're talking with partners about on-site child care and after-school programming and a STEM lab where we can partner with um, programs that are happening here at the library. Um, we're talking about uh, entrepreneurial programming. We're working with the Arizona Rural Development Council to bring in entrepreneur training uh, into the region to help with business retention and expansion for those small businesses. And so what we're really hoping to put together is a one-stop shop where people can get a myriad of services, workshops for the public health department is a uh, another partner that would allow us to do some some trainings. We've talked with some behavioral health therapists that want to come in and help um, parents with you know parents and children with some uh, play therapy and interactive tools and those kinds of things. So that's the overall scope of this is that we'd like to establish something that would be permanent, provide all of those resources that people need that need, that are wait, wanting that hand up, but don't really understand how to do that and don't have all the resources to be able to do so. Do you feel that this will assist us in our development of our workforce development and things that we have in, in our area to try to meet some of the uh, demands that we have of different businesses and different things, uh, any skill improvement or just basic uh, helping people understand how to get to the next step from where they are? Right. So we we handle that entire scope um, within all the programs that we ever see. And so, yes, to answer your question, we feel like this will be um, a, a big enhancement to those things that we already do. You know, we really work with people to identify career pathways. When we talk about self-sufficiency, we're not just looking to help them get from 12 bucks an hour to 14. We're helping them to identify long term planning. Um, but again, a lot of them don't know how to get 
a month into the future or two months in the future, let alone envision this long-term plan. And it, that requires a lot of support. So I do, I think this will be, I think it's crucial and I think it'll fill some gaps that we currently see. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I have a question, Mayor. Council Member Clark. Uh, yes, Stephanie, have you um, started the process of looking to see if the grants that you've received are feasible to complete the projects? You know, we had a pro uh, an item a little earlier where we had only two bidders on a on a, a city project. So is it feasible to get the work done? I know a lot of contractors and stuff like that are, are very busy right now. So are the dollars adding up as far as with the, uh, you know, the lead paint, the asbestos uh, remedy and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, so we are, we have an initial cost estimate that we think is is really high. We've talked to um, a total of three architects now, and we we believe that based on those two verbal estimates, we think that we're really close. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've talked about is um, we are hoping to enter into some partnerships where we might have a general contractor and or some of the subcontractors view this as a community project and mm -hmm. want to partner and kind of do some in kind. In lieu of that, one of the things that we've talked about is initially completing the exterior of the entire building and then finishing the south half, which would be our job center, what we're calling our economic empowerment center, if you will. And we have the funding based on the numbers that we've been given to be able to complete that portion of the project, get in there, and then work on grants to do a one-time maybe build out of the other side as we identify the partners that would go in there. But we have money to finish that much as well as a sustainability plan to cover the six thousand dollars of rent and the maintenance and the upkeep <clears throat> so how long would um or, or, or yeah how long are you looking at as far as uh, when you would start this if the lease agreement is um, authorized tonight so we have an architect wanting to go in and do measurements and start the project monday mm -hmm. um and then the as uh was in the staff summary, the ADEQ contractor is ready to go in on August 1st to begin the remediation, the hazardous materials remediation. Um, and then the goal is, is that we are ready to go right after the remediation. The hope is that the project will take nine months. Well, that, I think that it's gonna be more a timing issue than a cost issue when it comes to getting the subs based on construction and what's happening right now there. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just think it's a great use of that building and foresight of just changing it into something that can be used in our in our community versus a building that's going to, you know, just be there. You know, it's got some good bones to it still and some good kids have played in it a long time ago. So, you know, there's some, some things that will be nice to see that remodeled and changed and still serving a purpose in our community. Appreciate your guys' uh, vision of that. Yeah, thank you. Look for a motion. Council Member Clark. I move to approve the lease agreement with the North, uh, Northeastern Arizona Community Resource Network Incorporated for property located at 760 East <coughs> McNeil and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. I have a motion, is there a second? I'll second see. by Councilwoman Cotavis. Any other discussion? All for the vote, all those in favor? Any opposed? See that pass seven to zero. Thank you, thanks for being here tonight, Stephanie. Next item we have is item Nine summary of current events. I look to council members or any current events. Mayor, right, right yep. before you go to current events, we move call the public back in case we got any calls, yep. but we did not receive any calls tonight. Okay, we did not receive any calls uh, for call to the public, so we're going to close call <coughs> to the public and come back to <coughs> summary of current events. Uh, council members, Councilwoman Kakavas. I would just, at this time with the COVID-19 crisis, I would encourage everybody to not only um, go to the Navajo County website, County Health Department website, but also the summithealthcare.net website and get the up-to-date information as it relates to your healthcare providers and um, just direction on how to take care of your symptoms and how to approach your healthcare. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, attended a uh, meeting for the Meals and Wheels and Senior Center this last week, and uh, just want to let everybody know, even though we have uh, what's going on with the virus and everything else, that uh, Meals and Wheels will be still serving food. Um, so uh, if you need assistance and you need a meal, please don't hesitate to call uh, for Meals and Wheels. The Senior Center, the building itself will be shut down uh, due to our proclamation. But uh, we're still going to serve the people that needs to be served. So please don't hesitate and 
uh, to not to call, please, you need to call and, and make those arrangements. We'll be more than happy to fulfill those needs that you have. Thank you. Yeah. Council Member Clark. Uh, at, as uh, Vice Mayor Alsop was speaking, it reminded me the Sholos Unified School District is also going to be providing food uh, beginning tomorrow, I believe. Um, it's going to be distributed at the Whipple Ranch Elementary School. Uh, it is for any, any child under the age of 18, whether it's zero up to 18 and uh, any member of the community, um, and, and it's free to the, the public. So uh, there is a, a form you can go to the Sholos Unified School District's website and you can fill out a form. Let them know what you're uh, you're requesting, and then just pull up, and they'll uh, distribute that in the parking lot there, kind of like a drive-through service. Thank you, Council Member Leach. Just to add on, um, Vice Mayor said about uh, the Mills on Wheels. I know I got a phone call today from the director of NACOG, and we're having a meeting next week about any kind of funding that that NACOG can put out for for the seniors and for the schools or for anything that that they can do. Not we're not sure yet. Um, but we have a meeting next week on that. Thank you. And I'll keep going if I can. Um, just to so everybody knows, we the Darren Reed um, dinner that's scheduled for, I believe, the April 25th or 26th. Um, we're having a meeting next week on that um, to see which direction that's going to go. It may get moved. We're not sure yet. Um, but I'll, I'll know more at the, probably by the next meeting, and we'll put it out there. But we're still a go on it so far. But... We're having a meeting at my house next Monday to figure that out. Thank you. Councilwoman Gutavis. Um, in relation to Council Member Brant, um, Clark, sorry. Um, Don Hall is also taking uh, donations for lunch and breakfast items for the kids that are without food during this time. So you can drop off donations um, that can be microwave, that kind of thing that are easy to prepare while their parents are at work and uh, so you can drop that off at her uh, flower store morning star thank you i think i just want to remind people that you know with this uh there hasn't been any change in the food supply there hasn't been any change in the product supply it's just been that we have gathered things a little quicker than than maybe we need to or should so that supply is still there it just has to catch up because uh, the demand that people have, have given to certain items has taken it off of the shelf. So if we will just uh, be cautious in our purchasing and, and be able to take care of our, our basic uh, wants, uh, needs that we have, uh, we're going to be okay. So I just want to thank again, uh, if anybody has an individual situation or any problems, don't hesitate to call City Hall. We, will, we have people who volunteer who's willing to come and to help and assist. If you're elderly and you need something picked up at the store, call us. There's people who will bring them to you and, and assist you in any way we can. Okay. I just want to share uh, over the past uh, while we had a, a funeral for a great uh, person officer who lost his life, and we received a thank you card from Tribal uh, Chairwoman Gwendina Lee Gatewood, and she just asked if we would read this to the public. Uh, our hearts go out to them as well, and her gratitude that she's expressed back to us. So as the Apostle Paul said, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of strength, and love, and self-control. David became everyone's hero. His smile welcomed all, and his attitude to his work embodied that of determination and dedication to serve with purpose, just as you do to protect our communities and keep us safe. Your family support aids you and in your resolve to each day with valor, please convey our thanks to them. We unite our prayers. This tragedy has staggered the Apache people, the White Mountains, and the law enforcement community. However, we find comfort reflecting on the incredible person Officer David Kellywood was and how many lives he was able to touch during his time on earth. May the Lord bless you, and may you be strengthened for the challenges of the day. May your prayers and your pleadings be answered with blessings upon your heads and upon the heads of your loved ones. Your calling sets you apart, assuming the risk for the safety of strangers. On behalf of the White Mountain Apache people, we extend our sincere thanks to you by helping our police department and tribe. Your humility, spirit of commodity, speaks for itself in the career of service and sacrifice. There is no good word for goodbye in Apache, but we shall see you again with humble prayers for you, 
Gwendina Lee Gatewood, Tribal Chairman, White Mountain, White Mountain Apache Tribe. We appreciate that, Gwendina, for your thoughtfulness and, and care. We've had many meetings. I was able to attend a community meeting where we discussed at summit uh, safety and, and generalities of this virus. I've had several phone calls each day and we'll continue to keep you updated and abreast of the situation. Communication is very important to us. Attended a funeral of a very dear friend, uh, Bill Rawlings, uh, this past Saturday. And mm -hmm. Bill did a lot of work for our community, for the people of this area, and for the Rawlings Strong that we'll always remember. This family has been a great asset to our community, and we pray that their continued uh, support and love will continue to be shown to them as well as their their strength in our community that bill has done many things and when i look at him i've known bill since i was probably in third or fourth grade william allen rawlings and we kind of gave each other a little uh hard time his initials were war w-a-r and so it's kind of the war standard that you look at that when we as americans go to war we want the best we do the best, we build the best, we are the best. And so I just hope that we can continue the war standard here in our streets and our things that we build in this community, that we will remember that and remember it to be rolling strong and, and it's time to go to war if with our lives and what we do to unite ourselves together as we combat a disease of something that we can't see, but something that we can defeat if we will be calm, listen to authorities, do the best that we can and don't forget our prayers don't forget to pray that we can uh, be a blessed people as we always have been that we'll be compassionate that we'll do to our others as we would have ourselves done to and then we may remember to be kind and considerate at times we're going to have snow hopefully and so remember to get your cars off the street so the public service can clear the roads and stay home for a day or two that will be okay and so make some snowmen and, and have some fun with your family. So may God bless you and may he continue to bless the White Mountain. Thank you. Council, uh, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of things and just to repeat a little bit out of abundance of caution due to the COVID-19, we've implemented certain closures that was oh, were stated that. in the proclamation but that Mayor Seymour read at the beginning of this meeting. As a reminder, at the current time, all city facilities will remain staffed. However, in-person in services will be limited until the risk subsides. As a reminder, until further notice, the Aquatic Center, Public Library, Senior Center, City Campus Gym will be closed to the public. All, and we also heard today that the museum is, is has closed effective today also. All critical services such as police protection, transit, court services, water and wastewater and solid waste pickup, um, are, are continuing are fully available at this time. We will provide our citizens with an up-to-date um, information as we receive it and as the situation evolves. In the meantime, we encourage you to take precautions and prevent the this, this spread of the coronavirus. Just a note to that, since the library is closed, we want to make our residents aware that there are e-resources, e-books, and audio books available through the Navajo County Library District at NavajoCountyLibraries.org. Additionally, additionally, our library is offering curbside service to its patrons. For those who wish to check out items, including books, DVDs, and magazines, please call the library at 532-4070 to request the items that you wish to check out. Call again when you arrive at the library and staff will bring the items to you as you wait in your vehicle. Again, that number is 532-4070. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything else at Council? Thank you. Next item we have is scheduling of meetings. Any meetings that need to be scheduled or brought up at this time? We're aware of. This time we need to move into executive session uh, where we will have a discussion of an intergovernmental agreement with Timber Mesa Fire Medical and also a discussion of negotiation to purchase sale of lease of real property. And I'll move. Also a Sorry. discussion and consideration that was uh, exempt by law that executive minutes of February 18th and the minutes of March 10th. We have a motion by Council Member Leach. Is there a second? 
Second by Councilwoman Kakamas. All those in favor? Any opposed? Yeah, pass it. This time we'll move into executive session. Thank you.